Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the worst sector slash corners, in my opinion, in iRacing in 2023. Now there are some absolute howlers and I've got my top eight here for you today. If you have any differences of opinion, let me know in the comments what your top eight worst corners slash sectors are uh, on this game. Uh, without further ado, let's crack on with the video and let's start off with uh, number eight, which is VIR and turn one. It is absolutely horrendous, um, purely because, well, I'm going to give you an example. Let's, uh, let's go over to VAR right now uh, and let's have a look. Now, to give you an example of just how deadly Turn 1 at VIR is, uh, this is a replay from a couple of weeks back when the Porsche Cup was here in Turn 1. Now, if you lock up in the Porsche Cup, it's notoriously bad for getting it back under control again. But if you lock up in this thing and go off in Turn 1, it takes an absolute eternity to get this thing back on the track again. So I'm going to play the replay here. I'm going to give you an example. Um, I've got a stopwatch uh, on my phone ready to go. I'm going to start it as soon as this chap goes off the track, just to give you an idea of how long it takes to come back on the track. So here we go then. I'm going to press play here. And we're going to see how long it takes. All right. I'll start my timer as soon as it goes off. And there we go. So he's finally hit the tyre barrier. He's going to blink out a little bit. Because, you know, our racing replays and all that good stuff. It happens. So it's been about 15 seconds now. Twenty-two seconds. Twenty-two seconds it took him to rejoin the track after going off in turn one. Um, and that is just that that's not even a, a really bad example, to be honest. There's there's, there's been a lot worse, so yeah, that's um, yeah, it's pretty bad, isn't it? It's pretty bad. All right, then coming up for number seven is actually sunset at Sebring. I don't think anyone on this on God's green earth actually knows the proper line to take through Sebring. Doesn't matter what car, uh, what conditions, nobody knows. Do I go out super wide like this, and did, then do I tuck in? Or do I stay out super wide and then come in a bit later? Or do I tuck him really early into the corner and then have a wide exit for a better entry onto the straight? Nobody knows. There, there is no correct answer. There is no right answer. Oh, and it's extremely bumpy as well. And it's extremely off-putting. It's just... It's just awful. <laughs> it's just it's just awful. Um, it's one of those corners, it doesn't matter how many times you do it, it will never feel right. It never will. Oh, and there's always a risk of death. Every single time you go for it, so easy to just, you know, break a little bit too late and hit the wall on the outside. It's just horrible. It's it's a horrible corner. Um, blow it up. Get rid of it. It's disgusting. All right, then. Coming up next, uh, number six in the list is actually turn four at Silverstone. So as we go through turn one and then go through turn two, we're setting ourselves up lo lovely for uh, turn three. We hit the apex on the inside. And then here comes turn four. Where is it? Where is it? If you're if you are a single screen per driver, if you're using a single monitor, you can't see the inside. It just doesn't exist. This, you've got this massive pillar. I can see it because I've got a triple monitor, but look, you, you just can't see it. You, you, you just cannot see it. It's completely and utterly blind. So it's like where's the curb? Where's the curb? Where's the curb? Oh, there it is. And then you hit the curb, and then you just bang. You know. It's just, this This is more of the thing if you've got a single monitor. Turn four at Silverstone, and I know lots of you will agree with me on this, is awful because you can't actually see where the apex is because of the pillar of the car. So for that reason, turn four at Silverstone, I think, sucks. If you're on a triple monitor, you might be okay. But generally, most people, I think, race on single monitors. And for that reason, turn four at Silverstone, it sucks. Okay then, coming up, number five, probably not something many people would expect me to pick. There's actually the kink at Road America. Now, there are several reasons for this. One is because you always get sent there and absolutely die if you're in a slower class. Uh, and number two is if you are in an MR car or an RR car, like this one, and you go into the corner, normally it's flat, but if you go into it too much, Voila. Um, 
It's it's a it's really hit and miss. Like when you get it right, it's brilliant. But if you don't, either your tires are cold or you've had to readjust because someone's trying to overtake you there, or you know an LMP2 or whatever's diving bombing you into that corner. It offsets you so much that you're just gonna your car's just gonna die. You're just gonna get a meatball. Um, it's not. I feel like it's not so much the corner itself. It's more the fact that the way the MR cars, RR cars, and where you get dive bombed into the kink, you always end up dying. Uh, so for that reason, it's it's number five for those reasons, and I hope that makes sense. Okay, coming in at number four, being brutally honest here is the Hungara ring, and if I am being completely frank, I would just include the whole track. Um, I genuinely think it's one of the worst race tracks. In existence and I don't say that lightly but genuinely there's I don't like a thing a single thing about this track I don't like it at all um, I it just I don't think it flows well um, I think it's just full of off tracks as well if you're not careful um, the chicanes are super tight it's really difficult for overtaking I don't think it flows at all this sector in particular here um, just there's no overtaking that can be done the only place that can really have any sort of overtaking uh, is into turn one uh, and maybe turn two. Everywhere else, if you try to overtake, uh, it's it's a nightmare. Um, you know, there's a real high chance you'll end up just dying. Uh, you can't do any multi-class racing here because it's just not got enough of a flow to it. Track's not big enough for it. You know, it's wide, but the only place you can really do it again is into turn one. Everywhere else is just a risk. Um, yeah, the middle sector in particular is bad, but if I'm being completely honest, Hungara Ring, all in all, is just a terrible racetrack, um, in my opinion. Don't hate me, all right? Don't hate me. It's just my opinion, all right? Uh, but, yeah, I, I genuinely, yeah. Um, if there's one track I'd actually take a refund back on iRacing, it's this. Because I just hate racing here. It's It never ends well. It's just terrible. So, yeah. Number four. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Okay, number three on the list. I don't think many people will argue with me on this one. And some may actually disagree and think it should be number one. But it's actually sector one at Kota. Uh, and one of the reasons I actually think it sucks is because it's tried to copy Silverstone and it's not done a very good job of it. And these horrible, yeah. horrible sausage curbs on the inside yeah. destroy your car. Absolutely murder. Yeah. Flies it in the air. And it's so easy to get off tracks here. It's unbelievable. Uh, we did a pest race here um, a few weeks ago in the Porsche GT4. It was horrendous. It was really bad. It's not good for racing at all, uh, Sector 1. It is horrendous. It's horrible. Uh, and I'm surprised my, my car is even running at the moment after going over that bump, over those bumps. I think one way to fix it is to get rid of those sausage curbs and then all the runoff area is just gravel or, or, or grass or whatever. Because if you did that, then everyone literally has to stick to line. There's only one line. Uh, and there's no risk of hitting a sausage curb and absolutely flying off to Narnia. It's not going to happen. You'll be okay. You won't damage your car kind of thing. Well, if you're on the grass and you go absolutely miles off and hit the wall, you will. But generally, I think that's probably the way to do it, is just to make it so it's grass or, or gravel for the runoff area uh, and not just lots of extra tarmac, but there's a sausage curb there. If you touch it, you will die and you'll yeet into outer space. It's not the way to do it. Um, it's full of off tracks. It sucks. Get rid of it. Sector one at uh, at Kota. It sucks. It's really bad, and it's a fully deserved place in the top three. So uh, yes, text bronze and uh, P three for Kota sector one. Okay, then coming in at number two, a fairly new addition to the game. It is Magni Cause, and in particular, turn sixteen and seventeen uh, in the last sector, the final chicane. And I don't think. Words can really describe how bad this one really is. Um, so I'll give you an example. So as we're coming up through um, turn 15 here, and we're going through 16 and 17, just getting up. Look at these curbs here. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty bad. It, it's pretty damn bad. Let's try that again, shall we? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit more cautious now going into it. I'm not going to take as much curb as I did last time. I kind of did that on purpose. But it's just how awkward the thing is just to get through there. And then it just feels so, so slow if you go through it like that. So you've got to go either really, really slow to be safe. Or if you go quickly, there's always a chance uh, of death. So we'll go through it for a third time. And we'll try and take it with a bit more pace this time. We'll try and take it, we'll try and take it quickly. 
without actually, you know, causing any damage to the car or whatever, or any harm. But if you do, it's so bouncy, and it's so easy to just go too wide or hit the curb badly, and then the car's in the air, or you spin. Many, many things. But the, the final chicane there, it's just the size of the curbs completely destroy any sort of flow. Um, and what you'll find is, to go quick there, you have to risk it. You really, really have to risk it. And it's just such a high chance of your race ending there or getting an off track on the exit or anything like that. And then you qualify and laps done. And uh, yeah, it's just bad for your, for your SR, for keeping your car clean. Um, yeah, it's just a horrible, horrible, horrible final chicane. And yes, um, I'd much rather it was just like almost like a... Uh, just get rid of the curbs and just make it a smooth line to the finish. Because, uh, yeah, it doesn't add anything. Um, you're not exactly going at a high pace anyways after turn 15. So just get rid of it, I think. Just, uh, yeah, shocking. Uh, a very, very well-deserved uh, P2 in the list there. Some may argue P1 as well. So, yeah, let's find out what P1 is actually. Okay, coming up next. This is a controversial one because not many people agree with me, but many people do as well, if that makes any sense. It's the last sector at Fuji. Now, I have never, and I mean ever, been able to make sense of how to take these last few corners. It, it just baffles me every single time. The, the flow of it, I don't, I, I don't get. Like, I can't find a line through the last sector of Fuji. I can't tell you what it is. I, I don't know what it is. I just. And I'm sure there are many people in the comments who will be saying the same thing as me. But there'll be so many of you going, Ollie, what the hell are you talking about? Last Sector of Fuji is absolutely awesome. Why the hell is it number one? It's just number one because it is just so... It's just baffled me for years. Absolutely years. Um, and you might say, oh, that's it's similar to Silverstone then. But that's just one corner. This is a whole sector. Um, you just cannot... Like, the line is just... You never know. I, you never know what the li right line is um, through Fuji. It just, yeah, it, I can't I can't read it. And uh, it's just, whenever you just try and go through there with pace, you can just so easily, easily outbreak yourself. And there's look, these horrible uh, sausage curbs on the outside here as well. So there's those horrible curbs there. Um, you can't see the inside of this corner here. Again, it's blind. Do you turn it too early or too late? Who knows? It's a gamble every time. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, the same with this one here as well. You cannot see, uh, you cannot see the apex, uh, and then it's until it's too late. So, bit of a strange one to to put my number one, but it's because it's just baffled me for so so long, and I can never get it right. And I know there's so many people that agree with me, but at the same time, there are other people who absolutely love that last sector. So it's not a case of the fact that. Maybe it's just a, it's a pacing as, as, you know, with many things, you know, if you're not very quick for a certain corner or sector, you'll always think yourself it's a bit rubbish. But in particular, that last sector at Fuji, I, I'll, I'll just, I don't think I'll ever get it right. And for me, that's why it's number one on my list, um, because it's just I've never got it right for so long, quite simply. But uh, yeah, there's my top eight uh, worst sectors slash uh, corners on iRacing. Please let me know in the comments if you've got any uh, difference of opinion uh, and let us know uh, your top eight in the uh, comments as well. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of video. A little bit different to what I normally do. Um, maybe hit the like button and subscribe on the way out if you did. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Ta-da.